I'm Rich Lund, just a guy trying to help some monarchs stay parasite-free, and I have here with me some special monarch guests. In the recent Urban Eggs and Leaves video, I chance examined an egg that had been collected wild sourced. I looked at it under the microscope, which was something I hadn't really done since relocating to, well, my new location. Honestly, I was trying to get a good thumbnail for that video when I happened upon finding what appeared to be OE spores on that egg. Here's some of that original footage to catch you up to speed. This is effective, so here's really an advantageous situation. The egg is known to have spores on it. It's been bleach treated, so even though the spores are still on there, it should mean that those spores are no longer effective. So I'm going to isolate this egg. We're going to rear this one separately. There's going to be another episode to just ensure that this bleach treatment works and that this monarch comes out as an adult OE free. Now the internet went a little bit of buzz about uh, that episode or at least the, the specific niche of uh, those who rear monarchs questioning if those were actually OE spores on the egg or something else. Now I wish to applaud that skepticism because I would agree the amount of footage that I show in that, that episode I wouldn't call that really enough footage for somebody to make the call one way or the other as to whether those were OE spores or not. Hey, it was a chance find and not really the focus of that episode. Hence this one. Let's get into the details. First, is it even OE? Why do I think that it is? Or rather, why is that the conclusion that I've drawn? I've been looking at OE spores underneath the microscope for approximately seven years. Now where I was previously living, there really wasn't much OE out there. And also, I wasn't really having much show up in my system since bleach treating eggs and leaves, which I started doing about seven years ago. Even so, I'd still have roughly like one or two OE positive tests in my system show up about once a season. Hey, I was still taking in wild source cats, which could have already had ingested OE spores. I don't know. So I've done my best to try to train my eye to be able to see the spores on butterfly scales pretty effectively pretty quickly over the last seven years. And this hasn't been by looking at pictures on the internet, this has been by looking at actual samples, looking at the real thing. But even so, even I don't think that it's good enough to just say, hey, I've trained my eyes real good, believe me. Instead, let me show you what I've been looking at. Here is a positive OE test from a monarch, and it's at the same magnification as the egg, which I claim has the OE spores on it. So there's OE spores from a positive OE test there on the left. And here on the right, we've got the egg that has definitely something on it, which I'm making the claim, I think those are OE spores. Now, OE spores, while they're slightly variable, they are still mostly consistently the same size and shape. Not too much variety there. And while not always, quite often, OE spores will also pair or group or clump or cluster together. They're kind of sticky, even to themselves. At the same magnification, we can see that this is true of both the OE spores on the scales and the dark specks that are on the egg. But you need not make the call just yet. After that chance discovery, I became quite curious. Is OE more common out in my current location compared to where I was living? I began examining more eggs. And as it turns out, yes, I am finding, from what I can tell, more OE out here in my urban setting than compared to where I was living. So. Here's some other eggs at the same magnification as the previous images, zoomed and cropped at the same proportions. Some of these eggs certainly have more or fewer dark specks than the others, but when looked at closely and examined, these are dark specks that are made up of smaller little specks that are grouped and clustered together. These dark smaller specks also appear to be the same size and shape as known OE spores. With all of that together, with all of what I've shown you, and seven years worth of looking at them, that's what I'm basing my conclusions on. Because at this point, if these aren't OE spores, if this debris is something else, then it must be something else that is the same consistent size and shape as OE spores, groups and clusters just like them, and it's also something that we find on monarch eggs, and not just one, but multiple. So, as always, you can make up your own mind, you can make your own decisions, you can make the call. I think it's OE spores. Now on to business. Here we have our experimental monarch uh, having it closed today while I was at some teacher professional development. Well, it's early on a Wednesday morning. Looks like it's going to be closed today, our subject of question, but today's 
got, I've got school today, so I might not be here for the uh, e-closure. But I'll be back to film you. This is the monarch that was the experimental egg from the Urban Eggs and Leaves episode. And here we are. This is day four since hatching. There's our egg. Definitely time to get a fresh leaf. And here is our, and here is our fellow or lady in question. So again, this egg had OE spores on it. It was then bleach treated. And then when examined again, we saw that those OE spores were still on it. Now, if you want details on how to bleach treat eggs and leaves, check out that episode, The Procedures Show. Link is in the description below. So this experiment is really testing out, did the bleach treatment work? Did it kill the OE spores, which were still visible on the egg, yet still not harm the monarch? Or is bleach treating really only effective when and if the OE spores get rinsed off somehow, which didn't happen this time around? And maybe with bleach treating, just rinsing the eggs, it's the rinsing that maybe does something and the bleach is just an unnecessary chemical. Here's our first test. Okay, as you can see, I'm just gently pressing, just gripping gently where the wings connect to the thorax. That way she's not struggling. And I like to do it this way, using my thumb and middle finger. I got my ring finger here to just kind of gently touch the abdomen there. And then with my tape, just touch it gently there. And I got some scales. We'll put her back here in the tent though while we examine these scales. 21, 24, female. There we go. I'm finding out here for the first time too. And I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm seeing some very clean scales. Sorry about the dog, neighbor's dog there. He's rooting us on. So is the neighbor. And we've got no OE. No OE to be seen. Now again, for comparison here, I'm going to slide right on top of this note card. Here's, here's what an infested one looks like. Because it's a little bit bigger, let me adjust the focal length. There are some scales that have some OE spores on them. Let's see this a bit closer. So we can see they clump up, they group up, sometimes they're individual, but they're roughly that same size and shape. O-E-3. Well, all right, here's already some valid supporting evidence that bleach treating an egg, it can kill OE spores and leave the caterpillar unharmed. Hold on, devil's advocate here. I'm not convinced, Lund. How do we know that when the caterpillar came out of the egg, it didn't just like eat around the spores? It, it never actually consumed any. I'll admit this sucker hatched uh, while I was out running errands. And upon return, I really should have put the eaten egg underneath the microscope. Hindsight's 2020, and honestly, that day, I had had a day. And actually, I bet you've had a day too. Let's get you some freedom. With only one test, I too wouldn't be willing to draw that conclusion just as firmly yet. I agree with any healthy skepticism out there that maybe just one test isn't reliable enough. I mean, there were plenty of OE clusters around that egg, but still, it is possible. It's possible. And that's why retesting and trying to reproduce results is paramount in science. As stated since finding this first, I've found several other eggs that have what I claim to be OE spores upon them. So what follows is the experimental setup for essentially five additional OE spore-laden eggs. All right, time to go. Good luck.